Alice Taylor has been turning the world of toys upside down with Makey Lab. She's going to tell us why she has such an advantage over the incumbents. Makey Lab, it's very interesting, you're at the intersection of games, yeah. toys and 3D printing and we have one on yeah. the table here. So my um, specialty, so some folks say, oh, you, you know, you, you work for broadcasters, but my specialty was always being the nerd inside the building and uh, knowing a lot about games. I'm a big gamer, I've always played games and um, always wanted to start a games company. But what actually happened was uh, way back when, when with Store, I built an avatar builder where you could build your own little character back when people didn't use their own name and they wanted an avatar. And it was really, really popular and people kind of made all sorts of varieties. And in 2010, I was at the Toy Fair in New York, at Digital Kids actually, but at the Toy Fair, and just had that moment where I was like, I wonder if you can yet make avatars into dolls using 3D printing or, you know, cars into cars or dinosaurs into dinosaurs. You know, why is the digital world and the physical world still so separate. Um, I was curious, I didn't know anything about the toy industry, went and did a ton of research, found out very quickly why they're so very separate. Um, it's all about the difficulty and uh, the long timing of manufacturing, uh, and then set off to try and bring them together a bit more. And there's a very interesting um, issue at the centre of this, which is that injection moulding, the way that the physical industry has worked for a very long time, yeah. requires huge volumes of the same thing to be made, whereas 3D printing is the complete opposite. Exactly, exactly. So it felt like, I think a lot of people say it's going to replace traditional manufacturing, which is not going to happen, or at least if it is, it's going to be miles and miles away. But what it does is open up a whole completely new area of stuff that you can do. So I looked at the traditional thing and, and actually back at that toy fair just had this brilliant moment where it was all very clearly explained um, because I was sat next to a buyer and uh, an inventor. Uh, the buyer was for Toys R Us and the inventor was this guy and he had a book with a sort of toy stuck to the front of it. He was like, here's my product, you know, will you buy it? And the Toys R Us person basically explained, this is in the States, but they said, oh yeah, sure. Um, as soon as you have 100,000 of those in a warehouse in the States, and the guy was like, well, I'm just an inventor. I can't afford to do that. And the Toys R Us person was like, that's how we work. You go and get it made wherever you're going to get it made. You bring it here. Once it's in the warehouse, we look at it. And then we decide whether we're going to take that contract. And he was like, well, I just I don't know what to do because I can't afford that. And so what actually happens is inventors usually pitch big toy companies who then buy that idea from them and do it themselves. That's what happens. What's the reaction been? among, well, both children and I suppose the industry as well? Oh, wow. Uh, strong. So we, we thought kids and adults would like to customise toys because A, you can see customisation being really popular elsewhere, but going back to games and avatars, people spend hours creating their character. And just, you know, there's a 10-year-old girl I know very well who um, just plays World of Warcraft so she can just make character after character after character. And so we were expecting it to, the basic idea to, to fit, and it does. So we show these to kids, and the way it works is there's an app or a, a site that you can just use, move sliders to change the facial features, change the hair, the eyes, the hands, the feet, the clothes, and you basically build your character so each one is unique. And kids will do it for hours. You've got a real following among you know, the tech narrati around that roundabout. But what's the breakdown of uh, your user base? You know, how much are the geeks who just want to make a doll of themselves and how well, much are really we're children? Definitely still in geek lands. I mean, we're still mm. technically in alpha. So we, we mm. don't consider ourselves in beta until um, the game is out. Yes, yeah, so well, this is bit. the next stage. And, isn't and it? until the kind of the dolls are really. Um, well, one of the things is they're 100 pounds. They're just under. They're 99 pounds, which basically puts it out of the reach of most It's not quite kids. pocket money, is it? No. I mean, it's compared at the moment to American Girl in the States, which is $109, and the average spent in there is 400 bucks. But it's a very particular slice. And that's not great. You know, we want to get it into the hands of everybody. But the material costs of 3D printing are still really, really high, comparatively speaking. So that's one of the downsides of it. Um, but anyway, all of that said, uh, when we started, when we launched last summer with the Alpha, uh, I think we were 
um, 60% male, 40% female, most in their 30s and 40s, so nerds like us, basically. And then in that year, it's now 80% female on the site. Um, we did some, we've done some questionnaires, and of the breakdown now, 20% self, self um, uh, say that they're kids, 20% say their parents buying four kids, and then 60% are still like, I'm doing it for myself. So, and games, yeah, obviously, this, this is your, uh, you know, your pet subject. Right. So what do you do with, with Makey Lab when well, you take a doll so, into that space? So at the moment, the site and the app is effectively just a doll builder. It's kind of one-way path. And when we started this, the whole idea was virtual goods produce physical goods. Mm -hmm. And so in games, you have things like leveling up and rares and epics and all of that kind of stuff, you know, an item that you have to earn or that you have to find doing some kind of amazing quest or whatever. And we always thought that that would be just brilliant when associated with toys. So the, when the game comes in, it's going to launch in the, for, in the autumn. Uh, there'll be digital goods in there, physical goods, there'll be things that you can earn by doing stuff and then we'll grow that over time. And so ultimately kids can not only create their character, but their character will have stuff that maybe their friends have to then go and do or they have to do something together to earn. So, you know, that kind of thing where you really get to go, this is my trophy, this is what I have done. Are you worried then about a company like Mattel, say, coming in and offering a rival service? Um, not really. Uh, to be honest, the more the merrier. Uh, and I think that there's definitely, that's going to happen. It's mm. guaranteed. I mean, customizable toys are great and everyone will move in. For them, it's going to be much harder. Um, most of their business is established overseas and it's the system of traditional manufacture. So they'll wait. I mean, I, I actually did some, some uh, research on this. And uh, what they like to do is wait for somebody to prove the market and then they come in and probably buy them. So they, okay. they, they tend to move in the kind of buying companies for 400 grand region rather than doing it themselves. I'm thinking beyond uh, this space that you're very early in, 3D printing, you know, everyone's been talking about it for, for quite a long time now, but it's still early days and there's huge yes. potential. Huge What's early. exciting you in 3D printing? I really feel like 3D printing, I feel exactly the same about 3D printing as I did about the web in 95. Just like this changes so much. Um, it's a huge field of opportunity. It's nerdy and interesting. It's rapidly changing. So on a kind of daily basis, there's an announcement of here's a new machine, here's a new product. It is so fascinating. It's right at the top of the... Um, hype cycle. I talk about this a lot, Gartner's hype cycle. 3D printing is at the top. So everyone's talking about it at the moment and there will be the definite trough, moments the trough of, of disillusion. Exactly. Yes. And that will come when people are like, I bought my home 3D printer now, why can't I print, you know, chocolate cake on it or whatever. And so there'll be a little bit of that, but fundamentally I don't think it's a problem because this is only getting better and more varied and more interesting and cheaper on a daily basis. So, Alice Taylor, thank you very much. It's been really interesting.